Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, we're doing a review of the MacBook Air 2015 edition with a screen size of 13 inches. We're starting this review with the power cord. Now, I know that sounds a little nuts, but this is a very in-depth review and it's kind of unique. Now, basically, one side basically slides out. You have that power prong, which goes into your power outlet. And this wire I'm winding right now is actually part of the mobile kit. So you basically have these two prongs that can clip back in and out. It allows you to wrap the wire around if you want to have better mobility. Now the first wire I showed you is measuring it at 6 feet and the second wire here is another 6 feet. So basically it works like this. You can slide out the original prong, slide on the extension part just as so. It's really simple. And now you basically have a 12 foot cord in total. So you have the option of making your power cord 6 feet long or 12 feet long. Now as I showed with the power connector, one side is for the power outlet, the other end that connects to the laptop is a MagSafe 2 connector. It's a preparatory and basically just snaps on. It's a magnet, it connects with just like so, and to take it off, you just simply yank it off. This laptop has some crazy dimensions at only 12.8 inches by 8.94 by 0.68 inches, and it's weighing in at a measly 2.96 pounds. Sometimes when it's in my backpack, I don't even notice it's there. Quite honestly, this laptop is so thin and light, you can even use it as a frisbee if you wanted, or even slap someone across the face with it. In fact, to truly understand how crazy thin this laptop is, I'm just going to place my Samsung Galaxy Note 5 cell phone next to it. Air is about twice the thickness of a cell phone at its thickest part. That's pretty crazy. Now this laptop is basically screaming Apple appeal, not just for Apple users, but for people that are not really an Apple fan, you have to admit that this is one of the best looking laptops you can find on the market right now. Not only because it's thin and light, but it's just simply really sleek and sexy looking. To add to the appeal, when the laptop is turned on, you even get the Apple logo illuminated at the back. Now you would think this would take a lot of the battery power, but in fact it doesn't, but I'll talk more about the battery in just a moment. Now at one point I actually thought my laptop was defective because I actually saw the Apple logo just faintly behind the screen while the screen is off. You're actually going to notice it just faintly appearing in the middle of the screen while it's off because I actually have a flashlight pointing to it. But it turns out that's just simply because the screen is just so crazy thin. Now going over the port starting with the right side, we have an SDXC card reader, the first USB 3.0 port, a Thunderbolt 2 port. Now the front and back have nothing, so we'll just skip on over to the left. You have the MagSafe 2 connector, as I mentioned earlier, that's used to charge the laptop itself, which is a magnetic connection. The second USB 3.0 port, a headphone jack, and dual microphone ports. And now when it comes to ports and plugging things in, I notice that there's a fair amount of spacing between each port available. You'll notice that there's no Ethernet jacks, this is purely a Wi-Fi device which supports 802.11ac and Bluetooth 4.0. Now going over the display, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I have a 13 inch model which has a diagonal LED backlit display which supports a max resolution of 1440 by 900 which is good, not great. Now, the reason I say that is because I would have wished for today's day and age it would have came with a 1080p screen which is kind of the standard of most Windows laptops especially at this price point. Although, as I did say just now, it's a good display. The sharpness and detail is pretty good, it's the standard HD, but color pop is quite fantastic on this. It doesn't have the best viewing angles, they're just okay though. Although I do have to mention that the screen can get fairly bright with a decent amount of light output. I have to actually admit I'm fairly impressed at how good it is with light glare. Right now, with my flashlight and flashing it out at random points of the screen, I actually have to admit that it does a very good job of not basically distorting the entire picture. Even when it comes to sunlight, you know, natural lighting, it does a fairly good job of not reflecting everything back at the screen, such as your own face. When opening the screen, there are no locks. All you have to do is simply lift up, and you notice that there's a perfect weight balance between the screen and the rest of the body itself. When opening the screen, the body does not flex or move in any direction at all. Even when it comes to the flex of how far back the screen can go, it does a pretty decent job. Out of all the things I'm impressed with, I have to say the thing that's most impressive by far is how sturdy the screen is. It's a millimeter thick, but when doing my flexing test, I actually have to mention it's very sturdy. It's very hard to flex the screen. Just above that screen, we have a 720p camera, which is primarily designed for FaceTime, but of course you can use it for other applications. Whether Beats audio matters to you or not, just wanted to point out that this does not come with Beats speakers. However, with the design this thin on a laptop, I'm actually surprised at how loud these speakers can get. So I'm going to switch over to my camera microphone with the laptop on max volume and playing a video for my YouTube channel. So let's just see how it does. On the Note 5 compared to the Note 4 is that you can't access the battery. On the Note 4 you can swap the batteries out, the Note 5 you can't because it's a sealed body. Basically put, considering that this is a personalized laptop, 
meant for mobility and lightweight travel, it does a rather good job of its volume output from the speakers. The keyboard keys are fairly spaced out and have enough gap in between each one, so typing on it is quite pleasurable, especially considering it has some nice depth to each keystroke. You also notice that the keyboard is actually backlit illuminated. Due to the base of the device actually being so thin, it's actually quite comfortable to type on even for your palms. There's nothing to worry about it being irritated. This actually kind of passes on to when typing when using the laptop in your lap, again, simply because the laptop is so light. I'm not usually a fan of trackpads, but this one is extremely responsive no matter what you're doing, whether it be clicking, pinching and zooming, or just multi-finger gestures of any kind. Do keep in mind that this MacBook does not have forced touch. The MacBook Air of 2015, again, I repeat, does not have forced touch like, say, for example, the new MacBook Pro. I have the most basic version of this laptop, and because it is an Apple device, basically you can't upgrade after purchasing this laptop. So I have 128 gigs of internal PCIe-based flash storage, which is the most basic, as I mentioned. You also have the ability to upgrade before purchasing it to 256 gigs of internal storage instead. This comes with 1.6 gigahertz dual core i5 processor with 3 megabytes of shared L3 cache, although you can turbo boost up to 2.7 gigs. Again, you do have the option to an upgrade to an i7 processor with 2.2 gigahertz dual core processor. Now the thing about this laptop that threw me off the most was that it only comes with 4 gigs of LPDDR3 RAM as the base model at 1600 megahertz. Of course, you do have the option to purchase up to max of 8 gigs of RAM. Now, the 4 gigs as a base model was really concerning for me, but I have to mention that Mac OS Yosemite was optimized so well that I'm actually impressed with this performance. Although the extreme weak point is the Intel 6000 HD graphics, which basically means this is not a gaming PC. It's not meant to be a performance laptop. Now, because this is not a performance laptop, I find that doing benchmark tests is completely stupid and useless. I'd rather just give you real-world examples of using this laptop with the most basic specs available. So what I've actually done is open five 4K videos, and in Google Chrome, I actually have two playing because one is in another tab you can't see. Now, two out of the five videos is actually recorded from my own camera, which has a very high bit rate and will consume a lot of memory, so keep that in mind. And what I'm noticing right now is that three out of the five videos play, the fourth and fifth are completely frozen in picture. And of course, the more videos I take off or close, the better it performs. Just to keep this in mind, when you're playing 4K video, whether it be from your own camera or from YouTube, it is extreme memory hog. It will really push your laptop a lot. This laptop, for its specs, runs awesome. Let's put it this way, it basically runs twice as better than it would with the same specs with Windows loaded on it. So with my previous test, while it's clearly evident that using this laptop as a multimedia device or, you know, basically browsing the web or whatnot, it does more than adequate enough of a job. The specs are more than enough that you'll ever need. To give you a few more real-world examples, simply opening the laptop from sleep, you'll notice that it's instant. Again, with Windows, this will take a few seconds to load up, but with this MacBook, it's just there and ready to go instantly from sleep. And the final real-world example is booting up the laptop fully from a power down state. And when the laptop boots up, I've actually set it so that it'll open up a few windows, including Google Chrome, File Explorer, and Safari. You'll notice that it takes only a couple more seconds after the OS itself has booted up. Now the biggest reason this laptop has such an expensive price tag is that amazing battery performance. Now Apple advertises it having roughly 12 hours of battery performance with a 13 inch model like I have here, and I have to admit that's about correct. I usually have my screen brightness to about half or three quarters of full brightness. I use the laptop primarily for watching YouTube, and emails, browsing the web, and I do get close to 12 hours of usage. I basically have to recharge this laptop once a week or every week and a half. Basically put, I once reached the battery down to 5%. And even then, I played a 20 minute YouTube video with the volume coming through the speakers. The laptop reached down to 1%, but it was still on. It still didn't shut down. Now, when it comes to recharging the battery, it takes a lengthy three hours, but let's do some calculation here. If you charge a battery for an hour, you're gonna get about four hours of battery usage in return. That's insane if you think about it. In regards to other performance, the laptop stays relatively cool after long hours of usage and almost never makes noise. It's extremely silent and is always quiet. So I just recently converted to using Mac OS for the very first time in my life. In fact, you can find a link to that video in which I go through the process of buying my first ever Apple product. You can find a link to that video in the video description. It's kind of like a vlog and it ended up being this very same MacBook I just reviewed. And as someone who's brand new to Mac OS and, well, Apple products in general, I have to say that, yes, you're still getting your money's worth with this laptop. Now, myself and a lot of people would be skeptical, well, as I was before, that the specs aren't worth the price. I know. 
With the same price on a Windows computer, you can get like 16 gigs of RAM, an i7 processor, the whole shebang. Now this laptop is catered towards business people, uh, people that travel a lot, students, heck, even people that just need a laptop at home. If you don't really use your computer a lot, you just want to use one for, you know, surfing the net, watching some videos, it can do all that easily. Basically, this is a laptop designed for day-to-day -day tasks, for mobility, and amazing, superb battery life. It does it just fine. So since I'm brand new to the Apple environment, I have to say I've actually been converted into a fan of Apple products. Well, at least the MacBook for now. The iPhone 6S review will be coming shortly. You can find a link to that in my channel when it does come out. It's a laptop that has a lot of strengths, a tiny bit of cons for the storage space or could have got a lot, bit of a higher resolution screen, but you know what? The pros do outweigh the cons. And if you're not a fan of Apple, that's still a fact because I'm also brand new to Apple and I have to admit that myself. So if you guys found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter links in the video description. Be sure to hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.